Hey y'all, this sauna share does not have a biblical lesson. This is literally just me spilling my guts. <laughs> oh, what a week it has been. I feel so, I don't know, like I don't even want to use the word attacked. Like you could definitely say it was spiritual warfare this week, but you could also say maybe I was just out of balance because I wasn't like prioritizing and I feel like maybe this was a wake up maybe it wasn't spiritual warfare maybe God was trying to wake me up to something which deja vu like this whole thing has happened so many times since I've been off of medication and it's almost like a miniature moment of imbalance that's all it is I'm not going to attach a name to it I'm not going to add any stressful like big to do's to it I just had a week that was really freaking hard and caused me to have like a couple little miniature breakdowns where I was like, I'm really sad and I feel lost and confused and scared and alone. And um, I think the enemy capitalizes on that. Like, I think that when you're having those thoughts, the enemy is like, how can I prove that those lies, those stinking thinking? are true and so he like looks for ways and so I had a seed planted in my mind of negativity and then the enemy watered that seed and so like all these little terrible miniature moments sprouted and you know that there's a saying like if the enemy can't get to you he'll get to your family well when he gets to your family he gets to you so I just I had so much going on like Seth is refereeing and coaching and he's gone a lot and that's hard for me because he is my like I don't know maybe that's God's way of saying like you need to lean on me more than you lean on your husband I lean on him so much I rely on him so much and so him being gone a lot is just waking me up that I have responsibilities and I have got to get my act together around this house and do the dishes and do the laundry and care for my children well, so that happened, Seth being gone, and then both kids got sick. And then, you know those days where you like stub your toe and then spill your supplements everywhere and then drop a powder everywhere and then like, you just feel like you can't get your act together and then you're making mistakes at work. <laughs> it's just like all the things, excuse me. And I had a really, really good conversation with my, um, my managers at work because they could tell, like, they know when something's up. And they're like, what's wrong? And I was like, everything's wrong. And they're like, well, hang on, let's just figure this out. And so we had this really good conversation. And then, of course, I go home and tell my husband everything, because that's what I do. And he had very similar points. And I do this all the time. I, I don't know how to sit still, which is something I'm working on. You know, my whole thing is movement because that's what I'm good at doing. I'm good at moving. I'm good at being fast paced and all over the place. But I think what the Lord is trying to get me to lean into is the stillness and the silence so that I can listen to him, which I've said that I do and I do it, but not consistently. And I think this week was a wake up call like, hey, this was the week that I was trying to get you to sit still and you didn't. And now like, now I had to do something to get your attention. So I don't know. I don't. I don't want to label things as like, well, that was Satan. Well, that was God. I don't have, I don't have the authority to do that. And it doesn't matter. Ultimately, I'm just supposed to be leaning into what the Lord is calling me to do. And if I'm not sitting still enough and silent enough to listen, I don't know what he's calling me to do. I'm attaching my flesh to my desires. So something that was brought to my attention. Um, and I don't know if this was something that was said or like I, someone said something and I like, flipped it and heard this. Oh, there's this class I've been wanting to do. It's called, I said this, you heard that. And it's so for me. But anyway, so what I heard was the Lord saying, you've been pursuing all of these things for you, Sarah, and not me. And I was like, well, hold on God. Like I've already had that realization. Like when I quit teaching yoga, that was the most selfless thing I've ever could have done. I laid down all of my desires so that I could honor you. And he was like, yeah, and you picked him right back up. And I was like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I'm, I'm teaching yoga now about you, God. And he's like, yeah, but what about everything else you're pursuing? Like, are you truly doing that for me? 
or are you hustling so hard so that you can get the glory, Sarah? And I was like, no, that's not what I'm doing. And then he was like, okay, well, what about the one thing I've called you to do? Like before anything, I called you to be a mother and a wife. And if you can't like do those things, then why are you trying to pursue entrepreneurship so hard? And I was like, snap. And it was just a huge eye-opening moment that I, actually, I know my boss, I know my, uh, my managers said this to me. My boss has said this. I've had a freaking hard time becoming a wife and a mother. Like pregnancy was hard. Miscarriage was hard. Stella's birth was hard. Sage's, uh, three months on was hard. Like it's been freaking hard. I finally got like this thing that I wanted, which was becoming a mother. And I didn't know it was gonna be so challenging. And so what I've been doing ever since then is trying to escape it. <laughs> like, that's why I've been pursuing entrepreneurship so hard is because it's my escape. And God is saying, lean into the hard. That's where the rainbows come from is when you lean into those storms. And it's so funny because I literally wrote a book about, well, you just have to go through a storm and then you'll get through the rainbow. You'll get the rainbow on the other side. You just have to go through it. And I... I didn't share, I haven't shared this with anyone. I started rewriting the book and I, I completely flipped the script. I was going to rewrite the book and make it a completely different perspective about patience, perseverance, and being okay with waiting through storms and not rushing through them. And you guys know what happened? You wanna know the irony? <laughs> I didn't have the patience to write the book. <laughs> so I just, fixed a couple of mistakes in the first book, slapped a new cover on it, slapped a devotional on the back, added an author's note, added a prayer, added a couple itty bitty little things and put it out there. And now I'm trying to, you know, pursue getting that book sold. Don't get me wrong, like I do have good intentions with selling that book and I'm using the profits to try to pay for learning how to become a gospel speaker. So like I know I'm not completely selfish here, but major wake up call y'all. <laughs> I've been making some mistakes and I am, y'all know vulnerability is like, it's my thing. I, it's so easy for me to share my mistakes. It's so easy for me to share my shortcomings because I know it is so that someone else can learn and grow from it. So I'm not, I'm not ashamed. And I've been told I share too much. I've been told I give too many details. I'm trying to be aware of that. But I feel like when I learn these big lessons, I have to tell somebody because what if that's what God's trying to teach you? Like, what if you've been so busy and you've been so focused on building your thing that you haven't slowed down and been still enough to know what it is that you need to hear? Whether that's from God or a loved one, maybe you're just searching for all the wrong things. I don't know. I really hope this is encouraging. I know this sounded very like... I was just pouring my heart out, but that's what these sauna shares are. It's literally just me sharing what's on my heart. And I, the intention truly is to inspire somebody and to encourage somebody. And going forward, I'm not like, I'm not gonna like, I'm not stopping things. Like I'm gonna keep doing the things I've been doing. I'm just gonna be more intentional about them and I'm gonna slow down. It was funny because I told my husband all that stuff. And then like an hour later, I was asking him about scheduling some time to work on something I've been pursuing in my ministry. And he goes, I thought you were stopping that. And I said, when did I say that? I never said I was stopping that. I said, I'm trying to refocus on my, my number one job as wife and mother. I'm not dropping all of the things that God's put on my heart. I'm just going to slow down with them. I'm not going to force them. I'm not going to rush into them because that's what I've done for so long. And for Seth, it's hard because he doesn't have an entrepreneurship brain. He's like, that does not like entice me. He's like, I'm good with going to my job, getting off work, going to my second job. I'm good with that. You, however, Sarah, have always pursued entrepreneurship. I'm like, yeah, because it matters to me. I believe I was given a passion for being a leader and being um, a thought leader and being an encourager and a passion for wellness and all of these wellness tools that God has handed me and I can't keep those to myself, but I am going to be more intentional about my deliverance and not deliverance, delivery, the timing and the pacing of all the things I'm doing.
in my ministry, in my entrepreneurship, whatever you want to call it. It is a ministry. I'm just trying to do a couple of things that bring in income so that I can continue to do the ministry and have a roof over our heads and not have my husband working three different jobs. <laughs> okay, y'all, that's enough. I, I truly, truly hope that you are encouraged by this. I... If you're going through a storm, if you're going through spiritual warfare, lean into the word of God, lean into your support system, lean into your, your things that slow you down. Okay. I hope that encourages you guys. Peace and blessings.